five here ready. Welcome everybody uh, to remember who you really are. And today is again a very special episode. We have with us two amazing uh, School of the Heart teachers, two amazing people, two, you know, wonderful women. Have Ho Fan with us, that she's uh, based in Hong Kong, and Takako, who is based in Japan. And thank you for being here with us. Thank you for sharing and uh, everything that, you know, we're going to uh, talk about and every, being here. And, uh, and enjoying this time together. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, sorry, my nose is running. <laughs> because, because of joy, so much of happiness. Joy. So happy, yeah, thank That's you. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. And um, you, both of you have been instrumental in the School of the Heart growing, right? Uh, in your communities, in the areas where you are. I mean, Hofan in Hong Kong, Takako in Japan, it, you, your role in all this has been amazing. And you've, you've done you know, so many things. And we'd like to take this opportunity to explore or understand more uh, mm. what's going on and how the work of the school has blended into your communities, how actually people are receiving, right? The teachings, mm -hmm. the knowledge, the connection, mm -hmm. and how these communities are working together. And mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna start with um, Ho Fan. Sure. And uh, if you wanna tell us more, right, of how mm -hmm. this is going, how do the people in Hong Kong um, are receiving the, the, the School of the Heart teachings. Our teachers in Hong Kong are now, I think we have 14 teachers in Hong Kong, yeah. which is amazing. <laughs> and it's growing. Yeah, uh, well, first of all, I want to say how wonderful it is to talk with Takako, because we are usually the interpreters um, in yes, uh, right. online workshops, right? Mm -hmm, right. Oh, so finally, to hear her voice. Finally. <laughs> quite wonderful. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Hong Kong. Hmm. Well, as you know, Hong Kong's been through a lot. <laughs> really, really a lot. Um, particularly last year, we had a lot of uh, protests, right? Uh, a lot of social upheaval. And this year we had the virus, COVID and so on. Um, uh, for me personally, I was in the first cohort of heart imagery teachers when we were there together and trained my, I think three years ago training, wow, only. Um, and so for a while, it was just me and Trudy, we had two teachers, right? And we were you know, working hard and I was doing my workshop. So it was just me for a long time. And then this year, I think, wait, last year we had the social protests and I really had a big sense that um, we could really feel that people in Hong Kong, well, just, I feel like, I don't know how to describe it. I felt like the collective emotion was in a state of emotional collapse. It was really interesting. We, we very often in a community center, I host like weekly, I don't know, healing, hands-on healing. Um, we invite guest teachers to share things around healing. And I remember those few months, people would just come and they would just want to sleep. <laughs> like they would not want, they could not listen to any speakers. They could not do anything. It was just like, people just wanted to sleep basically. And so it was in the state of like uh, emotional collapse. And I, I felt that heart imagery and just being in the heart was a really, helpful way I think for people to stabilize themselves and there were a lot of people who were not particularly how do I say they wouldn't they wanted to do something but they didn't want to participate in the protest nor did they want to be against or to stand on either side but they wanted to do something and so collective meditation was one way they felt like they were helping the field and helping the community without um, you know, taking sides in the conflict. 
And so all like all the, they were people who had great unconditional love and wanted to just help everyone, right? And so I felt like this was a really good way for people to be able to feel they were participating and wanting to do something because there was so much suffering. And yet at the same time, you know, not contributing to the duality of the situation. So yeah, I started, <laughs> at one point I, I said, okay, remember we have the stop and breathe exercise where every day for three times a day, you just stop and you breathe. So I thought, well, um, let's do it every three hours. <laughs> So I tried doing Facebook Live every three hours and it completely wiped me out because it was too much. <laughs> but uh, I, <laughs> I was really gung-ho at that point. And so at some point I felt, okay, I have to go on my flow. <laughs> I need to take a break. But I, I think it started something because it was just very, very simple. And then it was just like, okay, every three hours we'll just get together and, and, and stabilize ourselves. And so, yeah, from then on, I felt like people had an outlet uh, people got to know the School of the Heart a little bit more. And then when we went to this year, when the School of Heart started offering teacher training, um, a lot of my students, they felt like, okay, we want to be heart imagery teachers too. And so little by little, the community has grown. It's never been very big, I feel like, but the people who are, who are at the center of it are very dedicated. So we've had Thomas, for example, he's been to like eight or nine cleaning the past heart imagery workshops. Um, yeah, we have students who come back often and we make it easy for students to come back and participate. Um, we have a lot of gatherings in between our big retreats and we, we often invite, you know, students to come back to alumni to come back to the introductory evenings or sometimes the retreats. And it's very helpful because once we have a group of people who hold the field, it's not just me holding the field, and new people feel it very quickly, right? They can experience this very, very quickly. And so I feel like the kind of people who are attracted by this have shifted really, uh, partly because I feel like I have more videos out. So people, people who come to me have already done some meditation <laughs> before they actually decide to commit to coming to a retreat. And so I feel like in general, in the retreats, we're able to go a lot deeper, a lot faster. Mm -hmm. um, our retreat model also has evolved. Our two-day workshops, we are very often we pick a place near nature. Uh, for example, cleaning the past, we go next to a waterfall and we actually do the Tibetan cleaning the past. Um, and we found for Hong Kong people, I think, just stepping back and going back to nature is a, you know, a, a commitment because <laughs> you go out, you have to go out. And um, it's very good for them, I feel like. So yeah, that's how we're working things over here in Hong Kong. Um, yeah, and now, now we've, the teachers are stepping out on their own and it's beautiful, it's really beautiful. And I, I feel like there is no sense of competition because I really believe, you know, each teacher whole, has their own frequency and they attract people who are right for that, for them, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're looking to see how we can help each of the teachers you know, really shine in their own, in their own energy. So we, we did an interview series. We all, you know, we featured different teachers, you know, talking, for example, Joe talked about her theater. Uh, Thomas talked about his art. And so each teacher just, uh, Atonga talked about connecting with the moon because she holds moon parties. So yeah, different teachers each, you know, uh, sharing what they're excited about. Kind of like this program, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> and like exactly. just letting each person shine and supporting them in whatever way we can yeah so that's it's Hong Kong really <laughs> that's beautiful yeah. and I think it's so important right especially with whatever is going on today and how communities coming together closer uh mm. being over the the polarity of situations mm. of of the different things that are happening and staying together finding ways to if you will if you want like a, it's, a, it's like a revolution, right? Like putting out there what is inside without being partisan, without, you know, um, the need to participate in any mm. polarized uh, thing that's going on. And, uh, and, you know, Japan is also growing. I mean, Japan, I have to say, the school in Japan, we have today 20 teachers in Japan. 
and <laughs> and every time it's been growing and it's so wonderful and Takako was there from our you know our first like you our first uh, teacher training in Hong Kong Takako was there the first teacher training we had in Japan when we we visited Japan and uh, I want to take your intake into you know how the Japanese people are are you know resonating with these teachings how the teachers uh, in Japan are expanding and sharing yeah yes yes um I thank you for thank you very much for this opportunity and I need to speak slow because I am so moved to move you know? and um before um um this um I asked many of my fellow teachers in Japan uh, how they felt now how they are feeling after um, doing the training and the workshop and the training and each of them gave me some very personal answers mm -hmm. and they um all um a lot of things that were in common among them was that it was very um they were so glad to know the way to go into their heart and to be able to remember that all of us came from one source. We are all connected in the heart and we are, we all come from the same origin, which is the God and the heart and we are all connected there. And another thing that, um, many of them told me is that a part of a part of them i mean a part of me knows about that and then the other part of me is li living our daily lives and then we get you know lost and we go back so easily into the brain but and some part of me you know kind of blames ourselves for not being able to be in the heart mm. but then you know there's the mm -hmm. trick you know you don't have to try you just you just need to remember that's how we are actually and and I think I feel that in Japan people already have the tradition of like the Buddhism and the Shinto way which is a Japanese tradition way to connect with the God uh, which is in everything around us so people already have a sense but it's like um we couldn't, uh, we weren't able to speak it out personally. It was something collective and it wasn't, it was about the, um, the collective mind and to be able to go into yourself for into your personal space. And then you can find the answer yourselves rather than asking something what is outside yourself. Mm -hmm. That is the really important thing. And, um, maybe Japanese people are a bit shy and, you know, they are the 20 teachers among them only, I think maybe two have actually done the workshop, the um, heart imagery workshops. And, but they are taking their moments and it's like, we are like a newborn baby uh, because it was only last year in December that um, they, uh, Daniel came and did the, of course, Agathe came in uh, summer last year, but last year, December, Daniel came and did the a workshop and a teacher training uh, for the uh, higher self, uh, Journeys into the Heart. And this year, we had the uh, three of the heart imagery workshops and the trainings. And so we are taking baby steps, very personal steps, and learning to connect with each other through the heart from our actual personal experiences and speak out personally but what we speak uh the language we speak is what connects us you know i'm not sure if i'm saying it right being personal takes real courage mm. to speak from what we actually feel but that is what actually connects us right and 
I think that's the beautiful part. And when I did um, some uh, sessions myself with my people around me, it actually they actually really resonated very much and very well with mm -hmm. this, you know, the heart, and it was very natural. So my, you know, the reason why I am so moved right now is that. Mm, you know, Japan, uh, Japan is an island and people, uh, so um, it's not um, very often that we see um, people, uh, non-Japanese people around us. You know, we are surrounded by mostly Japanese people with black hair and, you know, sort of yellow skin. <laughs> and, but thanks to this COVID situation, we are able to do these workshops together with uh, people all around the world, like with Hopan, with the Hong Kong people and like Chinese people. And then we have other people uh, joining together. And I think, of course, being together in person is wonderful, but to be able to connect with the world in this way, um, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. <laughs> wow. You know, it keeps coming and uh, you were moved earlier. You said, you know, about connection, feeling this connection. And I think it, it keeps coming. And I think it's one of the, the subjects of today, all of us connecting. And through this COVID, right, where we cannot travel right, anymore, we've been restricted. We were talking with Hofan mm -hmm. earlier about, you know, restriction and all this mm -hmm. kind of stuff. You see that even in that, even when you know you can do let's say less things that you used mm -hmm. to be able to do there is this connection that's coming up mm -hmm. maybe a more meaningful connection mm -hmm. between us maybe a more supportive connection maybe um through going in our hearts through you know finding peace within us we have a more truthful connection in, you know, mm -hmm. events that are now people from all around the world that maybe they never had the opportunity of joining, right? Because they couldn't travel because of the different, mm -hmm. you know, things. And I think that's a, one of the beautiful things that is coming through this turmoil, right? Mm -hmm. That's been happening around the world. And I know Hofan just said earlier that Hong Kong is going again into a lockdown. So how do you feel about, because there is, I, I believe that there is a need, everybody to feel connected with everybody mm. else, right? A true heartfelt connection mm. about this I, I, coming yeah, again. I, right now, I'm actually very glad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I say this in a way that, I feel like I have, t I really have time to be with myself mm -hmm. in a way I was, you know, busy rushing around doing a lot of activities, but in a way this enforced lockdown, I feel like has pushed people or given people an opportunity to be with themselves, with the people closest around them. It's tough for a lot of people because they have to deal with, you know, the family, the relationships, uh, and you have to see them all the time. Right. But I feel like it's really pushed a lot of people to really be with themselves. And I, I really liked what Takako, when Takako was speaking, I actually had an image of a flower. Maybe you have lots of flowers behind you. But, um, <laughs> but when you talked about, you know, you, the Japanese are really taking their time. I really feel this work has to work from center outwards. So mm -hmm. we really, we, we have to, you know, work hard as teachers to sort out our, ourselves and then we connect to you know the people closest to us and then you know then the community grows that way right rather than i don't know having lots of teachers doing lots of workshops uh, we really have to start with ourselves like as you said the individual really so I, I really feel like the lockdowns i don't know given me an opportunity to really work hard on myself um and i don't know as a community of teachers I really feel we, we actually are in a very similar situation in that we have lots of teachers. Not all of them are ready to teach yet, right? And I say, well, it's okay. <laughs> it's really okay. Um, everyone has their own timing. And just like you don't, you know, you don't pull out the flower, 
all mm. you do is you know you give it water you give it sun and then at the right time it'll blossom right and I feel like it's about being compassionate with yourself like okay well what's right for me now and I feel like the lockdown has made things more intentional and just because it's a change and people uh you know need to make decisions about how do I spend my time right <laughs> um yeah so I, I feel like in a way I'm like oh yeah you love that <laughs> I, I do know I am very privileged in the sense that we have, you know, we're next to nature and mm-hmm. for a lot of Hong Kong people, you know, who live in tiny flats, it's much tougher. I, I, I think I would go crazy if I couldn't go out to nature. So I think mm-hmm. I'm very lucky in that sense. But uh, yeah. <laughs> it's true. You know, what you're saying about teaching and it takes time, I, I, I it's totally true in a sense of sometimes I feel mm. that I've done something right. I've, I've done a heart imagery workshop. I've done a journeys into the heart workshop. I love it so much. It changed so much inside of me that I think that's, you know, the calling I want to teach. I want to share, mm. right, with the people around me. However, it takes a lot of inner work to be able I think to to feel ready that I can mm. pass the the feeling or the sensation that I had as a student, right, mm. to my students. And it's normal to take time. It's normal to take, you know, baby steps. It's normal to feel like sometimes we say when we're doing teacher trainings in the school, teach with other people. It's easier when you teach with other people. Hofan said earlier, you know, there are more teachers. We support each other. We are holding the energy, right, for the school in Hong Kong. It's not one. It can, can never be one person that will change the world, if you like. It's, always, it's, it's everybody coming together and, you know, holding this field and, and putting the, and supporting each other because everybody goes through moments that hmm, they're a bit difficult. I feel a bit this and I feel a bit that. And then you have somebody always next to you to share, to communicate, to, you know, explain. I find that the, the role of the school, that's a huge role that the school is playing and needs to be playing, right? Mm-hmm. To speak about stuff that maybe you don't speak with the people around you. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was... And especially at this time, I was reading this article about Japan recently. Mm-hmm. It was about COVID oh. and how suicide rate in Japan is higher than people that have died right. from COVID. And I, I thought it was shocking. I thought that, you know, the impact, how people are feeling, right? Mm-hmm. How can we support people that are not feeling well? How can we know tell them that we're here you know yeah right absolutely yeah I you know the the other day you were talking about I think you were talking about what um matters it's not about just it's not about the virus it's about the fear inside us Mm. that is you know reacting to the situation and that's that's causing the damage and people without fear is okay but it's, you know, it's been re- revealed so much that people were living with so much fear and under pressure, and that's coming out right now in Japan, because there's not much of uh, actual, you know, um, virus incidents, and um, I, it's this feeling, but I feel that people are so tired of logic information and we need more feeling more feminine energy Mm -hmm. to be relaxed and to trust our feelings so yeah i know that uh when we first came it was my first time in japan Mm -hmm. last last year i think and mm-hmm. I was uh, very excited. And we were talking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have to say that it's it's beautiful. I mean, 
and we were talking uh, with the um, oh my, with the director of an editing of a of a publishing house. Oh yeah, and uh, he was telling us because there is a huge group of Japanese people that are that know Drumvalo, right? Mm-hmm. And they have been following him for many, many years. And it's one of the things that I'm always impressed when it comes to Japan that people are, you know, loyal. If you like, they start something and they're there and they're doing it and they're doing it and they're doing it. <laughs> So Drumvalo, I think last time he was in Japan was maybe more than 10 years ago. He stopped traveling. Mm-hmm. I think it's more, maybe it's 15. So in one of his journeys, they created a med- medicine uh, um, circle, right? Mm-hmm. In, in Outside of Tokyo. I don't remember where it was. And um, the director of the publishing house was telling us that even today, there are people that go to that place where they created the medicine you know, circle and, and they're, you know, going there to feel the energy to Wow. I, I, I was, okay, I said, that's, that's beautiful. You know, mm-hmm. people are looking for it and they're, you know, doing it because I think sometimes people forget. People want to try do something once and, and you know, the revelation mm-hmm. happens. Uh-huh. <laughs> they forget that you need to stay, you need to stay with the practice, you need to, hard imagery, for example, it becomes part of your life. When Mm -hmm. you first start, it's not, it's something that maybe, it's something new, right? But the more you you use it, it becomes part of your life, but you have to use it to see Mm -hmm. the influence, Mm -hmm. to see the change inside of you. And I know Hofana has been using it for uh, a long time, and mm-hmm. I'm sure, like earlier, you said, you know, Takago was speaking, and I saw this flower, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really think it's vibration, right? I feel like there are people in Japan with that level of consciousness, that frequency, and so they're attracted to this stuff, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, yeah. I recently have had some one to one clients, quite a few actually, who are. Mm-hmm. Exactly what you said, in the sense that they, you know, maybe they've been working at the same job for a long time, mm-hmm. um, being very responsible for the family, but inside in them, there is a part that um, maybe is very spiritual, but they can't talk about it with their work colleagues because right, right, they're in right. a work environment who are, who will think they are crazy, right? So in uh-huh, a way, it's, yeah. it's very interesting, right? And yet, because of the immense pressure of this day and age, they realize that they're at a point where they can't stand it anymore. You know, the old way of working is not working for them anymore. Mm-hmm. Logically, they they have tried every situation to make themselves happy and they find they're unhappy, um, maybe slightly suicidal even. Um, and they're at a point where I need something new. And mm-hmm. so this is where hard imagery is wonderful because, you know, at this point, you know, they are really desperate. <laughs> And mm-hmm. you're like, okay, well, you've tried everything logically you've done. Mm-hmm. Let's try something else that isn't logical. Mm-hmm. Right, and, right. And so I really feel, yeah, we're, we're in a day and age where we are at the limits of logic. It can help us in many ways. But uh, I don't know, even if you look at the world today, like we're, we're in a big car ecologically heading to, towards a car crash, right? Logically, mm-hmm. I don't see a way out of it. Um, somehow we need to flip things and you know jump to a different mode where we can find solutions that are no longer linear in nature Mm -hmm. so that's why I feel uh, Agafi talked about you know how can we help these people in a way I I really think uh, yes helping you know individuals or you know groups of people is very important but I think holding the field is just very important in itself mm-hmm. because just being in this frequency, you know, it ripples out. And I, I, I'm, I'm starting to feel that it's less about doing and right. more about really uh, just being. And then yeah. when, you, when you're, you're being in the right state, in the state of love, it just, mm-hmm. people feel it. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, I think that's the magic. Because most people who come to heart imagery courses now they're not logical at all. 
They're like, I saw, I saw Daniel's face, or I saw your face, or I don't know why I came. <laughs> yeah, I, it's a I feel calling, that is isn't the nature it? Of the school of the heart, right? It mm-hmm. really is a calling. So, yeah, I feel so. We've pretty much given up on like very logical marketing. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're too rational because <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we interview people they're like i'm like did you read the description they're like no <laughs> <laughs> well, and i say well we should put it there anyway but i don't know <laughs> seriously it's quite funny <laughs> sure it, it's so true it and it's funny you know the school i think the last year that everything is happening the school is now in 32 countries so we have there are teachers of the school in 32 countries of this world Mm -hmm. in 19 languages sometimes you wonder you know how can we you know all all these Mm -hmm. people be connected in in one and and we are and you know more and more people coming to the school to this teaching back to the heart i think i think that's the that's the pool today that's the calling you know you've mm-hmm. tried so many things in your life you've tried you know <laughs> careers you tried you know um, i don't know doing everything right you know the way society mm-hmm. told you so mm-hmm. you have to do something different you haven't figured it out so you have to try something different <laughs> and you know you go back it it was you know drew was saying it's the fall right the disconnection mm-hmm. between mm-hmm the heart and the brain was the fall. So now is the time for us to rise, to connect again, the heart and the brain and, and create, mm. hold the feel, right? And, it, and at least create a world where we wanna be in, we wanna live in, we wanna, you know, that we feel represents us. Mm. So I look forward to the future of, <laughs> of this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think every time you have people coming into workshops, and I know you both saw it so many times, right? Just the, the feeling that people take with them when they go home. Just that yeah. last moment, the love, the connection that there is, the... I. I don't know, I think somebody asked me once, said, you know, don't you miss, you know, being home? Don't you miss being with your family? We were traveling so much before mm-hmm. this COVID. I said, every workshop is my family. Every person I meet, I feel the same. I don't feel different. I, I don't feel like, oh, I don't know this person. Oh, we are not connected. I don't feel, like I, I feel love, the same love that I feel for my brother and my mother. And mm-hmm. I feel the same love. I feel the same connection. I feel... So I think that's a beautiful gift for me personally, right? Mm. To feel this way for everybody. And I think, you know, for, yeah, for everything. And it really multiplies. Everything. Like when there are multiple people in the workshop, the, the feel just, you know, exponentially goes up. So I think that's why people are also attracted very much to gather in groups to meditate. Yeah. And I know Takago was uh, hesitant in the beginning. Why? Why? Which which part? No, in what way? The first time when you 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 know when you learned about the school of the heart. Ah, right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, last year in summer. <laughs> last year in the summer. You of see, it, it was so you know not so long ago, but it feels so far away. Right. <laughs> right. Because I am, um, I I was so skeptical of uh, skeptical about this uh, spiritual stuff, you know. Because I like to be grounded, to be practical. Mm-hmm. But um, I, the beauty was that this actually felt really practical. Mm. It, it it made sense to be in the heart uh, rather than being in the brain and in the being logical and. What I've, what I've been feeling is that it's like returning to your childhood mm-hmm. and going back to the pure state. And of course, I feel I love men, but I feel that women <laughs> you know, had maybe uh, had a, 
better chance of being in this <laughs> you know, non-logical stuff. And um, but going back to that um, state of the child and being pure and playful and being simple, um, mm -hmm. it's fun, right? And yeah. that's the part that connects us. Um, yeah. I, I was just thinking what you said, you know, it's practical, but in a weird way, it's not really explainable. Mm -hmm. For example, people ask me like, what, so what are your plans for next year? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just going with the flow, right? It's like, how's the hot school of hot I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Which is very much, you know, uh, the time, this era is a I don't know era because so many things uh, are. Right. Uh, so unexpected and we just improvise right mm -hmm. but it's it's true <laughs> I feel like the way of the heart you don't you, it's full you just trust the moment mm -hmm. you trust yourself and the universe will carry you and reveal to you the next step but I think traditionally you know people want to know your 10-year plan right? um... <laughs> or where you're heading <laughs> it's like, uh, I don't know <laughs> when I, I feel like when there's critical mass you know, then the next thing will happen, right? So, for example, they're asking, you know, when is the school of the heart in Hong Kong? When yeah. do we make it a legal entity, right? Mm -hmm. And so on. And I'm like, well, you know, when there's someone who wants to do the admin, <laughs> someone. <laughs> 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 you know, then, right? So I feel like when the moment comes, it'll come. And the nice mm -hmm. thing is, you know, we're wondering, for example, um, I was very excited about the flower of the heart card, right? So I was like, oh, uh, but I'm going to order some. Anyone wants any, right? And then, you know, 40 people, 40 alumni said, I want one. Oh. I'm, like, I'm like, great. Now I have to post this or like get these to people. And I thought, you know, well, it's nice. It's a nice idea, but I don't want to spend my life doing this. So I'm like, <laughs> wouldn't it be nice if someone popped up and wanted to do this, right? <laughs> and maybe earn a little money for the transaction of posting it to uh, making sure everyone... And then someone popped up, right? And I was like, yay! <laughs> I was like, you know, when uh, sometimes, uh, maybe this is what we talk about, heart creation. Like, what if, and then, bling, <laughs> it happens, right? It's there. Yeah. You know, um, uh, what reminded uh, me, uh, what you reminded me was that um, the feeling of, the sense of, the practical being practical changed inside mm -hmm. me you know it's before um learning about the heart it was about uh, being able to be efficient and being mm -hmm. able to achieve things but mm -hmm. right now i feel that it's about being in a certain state being mm -hmm. being you know peaceful and being in a happy state being connected and so there's no meaning in just being efficient if there's no connection and if there's no trust and no peace. If... So um, what really is ringing in my mind, uh, what I heard from Daniel is that, you know, the career on this planet as a human being, it's, it's very short and it doesn't real, uh, mean very much when um, you have this whole perspective of, you know, you're living as a spirit. Um, that's what matters. Uh, your life matters. Um, it's we live in a much more bigger context, and that really means a lot to me. And I I feel that it means a lot to uh, other Japanese people, and of course other people around the world, right? Yeah, sure. It is sure. ironic because it is more efficient. Like when you don't care about efficiency, it actually yeah yeah, yeah right, right right. I mean, yeah. like any organization, you want to build it on trust, right, mm -hmm. and participation and so on, mm -hmm. and it needs that groundwork for it to, mm -hmm. right. But it's not linear, and I think mm -hmm. we're used to measuring things in a linear way, right. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I find it much more efficient. <laughs> 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 and happier and it works better yes. and you know you feel so much better and it's mm -hmm. it's a combination of all this stuff right it's uh uh it's against the old paradigm where they say you know do it 
you know, the more, the harder, you know, sweat and, you know, that's where you're going to succeed. And then suddenly you find something that's, yeah, it's flow, it's easy, it's peaceful. And you're actually doing everything so much better and so much easier that, but it's paradigms. And I think we're at a time where the paradigm is shifting, right? It's, yeah. I've heard, I have to say that this week, I've heard the same thing so many times. It was like a confirmation after confirmation after confirmation that, you know, that everything is shifting. It's the time where everything mm. is shifting. Everybody is ready. You know, people are coming together and actually people are coming together and they're joining together, being in states of love, mm. overpassing fear, overpassing polarity. And this is why we're here it's uh, amazing i want to ask you what's your i i, I want to like close with this idea like what's your favorite exercise that you find yourself mm. doing and coming back to and it could be a meditation it could be an egg could mm. be a heart imagery doesn't matter mm. I go for phases. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right now, what I'm doing a lot is the Tibetan cleaning the past. Because uh, this month with lockdown, I'm like, I'm just going to clean everything. <laughs> and I realize as a teacher, because people go out to the waterfall, I'm often, you know, just holding the field, but I'm actually not cleaning my past, mm -hmm. which would be irresponsible because I'm like, you don't want to teach your teacher like <laughs> processing, right? So I realized that. I've led, I don't know, maybe over 10 retreats or whatever, right? But I actually, I don't know, I, I actually don't, what, the other meditations I get to lead and experience, but this one I don't, you know, because it's so personal. So I'm like, okay, this month, I really want to clean the past. And so th this is my current flavor. And together with that is the waterfall, because I, I really feel like, okay, that's really helpful. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's well, my favorite. For me, I really need to be bold to tell the truth because mm -hmm. my favorite is to improvise. Mm -hmm. My favorite is to go into the heart and then meet my higher self there and mm -hmm. then ask the play with me. <laughs> and so I actually go with a question, but then what comes out is so fun mm. and it's it's not it's nothing that's actually well it's something that's related with the um uh, existing exercises but mm. what actually happens is really creative and mm. the sense of being creative is actually what i enjoy most mm. very nice that I is such a hard answer <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> It changes, it moves, you know, how you feel. And always, I know, and you know, that's that's the beautiful thing about, you know, imagery that you go in and you start and you, and sometimes you think you're going somewhere, but then suddenly everything changes <laughs> and takes to somewhere else. That is mastery when you're like, you know, without the training wheels anymore, right? Exactly. <laughs> So, um, uh, so yes, um, the message I really wanted, I, I, I feel that the Japanese people really need to hear, and maybe other people around the world, is that um, people keep doubting what comes, what pops up, you know, whether uh, maybe this is something my mind is doing, I am just making this up, uh, this is something just happening in my imagination, but actually those things matter, right, in heart imagery, and mm -hmm. so because Japanese people take, uh, especially take things very seriously, they feel that they have to stick to some kind of route. Like if this exercise is made this way, then we have to follow this exactly as it is, as it is written. But um, I feel that what actually happens is something more in the moment, mm -hmm. something that happens spontaneously. And mm -hmm it would be really reassuring for the people to know that it's okay to go astray. Yes. Yeah. Trust okay yourself, to play, right? Yeah. No, I, I really, we, we also have this too in Hong Kong because mm -hmm. people, you know, they're like, 
am I using my brain or am I using the heart? Mm -hmm. So we, we check, as teachers, we check the frequency, okay? Actually, I can feel you in your heart, right? Mm -hmm. So they feel like they have a confirmation and they know that, the, okay, okay, this is the feeling I'm getting. But uh, I remember when I was in Chiang Mai, you remember that exercise where we're holding hands? And then uh, I happened to be next to Daniel. So he was the side. So we would send love this way around the circle. And yeah. then we'd send love this way around the circle. And when we did it this way, my brain just went blank, <laughs> totally blank, because Daniel's energy was just like, drum, <laughs> like, no more beta waves. And I'm like, wow, this is like, so I felt so calm, kind of like tiny space, but even more calm. And I'm like, okay, that's, this is what not thinking is like. Mm -hmm. And then I asked Daniel, because I was like, well, hot imagery, this is not hot imagery, because I cannot think any images at this point. I'm just like, emptiness total emptiness so i'm like so does heart imagery use the brain because if there's no brain way like there's no thinking mm -hmm. i'm in a state of emptiness and this is not as i understand the imagery and he explained that yes there is you know definitely thought involved right and intention involved with an image right so i'm like oh okay so it's not like it's not like we're doing heart imagery and there's no brain at all it's actually a combination of like heart and brain working together. So now I tell people the story and they're like, oh, okay, it's okay to use my brain. But I'm like, yes, it is. You need to use your brain. If you had no brain, you would have no image. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the more you do it, like sometimes I tell people, even if it's your imagination, right? If it's, if it's just, right. it's okay, just let it go. Just go with it and there will come a point where the image, the vibration of the image changes, right? So you feel yes. the image differently. Yes. So if you don't allow yourself to go through the journey of arriving there, you always question, am I doing it right? Is mm -hmm. this from here? Is this from there? But if you allow yourself just to go into the whole process, then you will feel the difference. I mean, it, it's yes. there, right? It's just about letting go and trusting yourself yes. that it's okay yes. you know yes and it's a spectrum it's like how, how many percentage brain and how much percentage you know it's yeah. and, and and it's like okay well at some point it will take over like Takako's images and you know the teacher will be seeing an exercise and you're you'll be exploding with other images and that's that's also an experience so it's you know different gradations and so mm -hmm. If your brain, if you stop and judge it, ah, am I using how much? Then that 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 definitely is brain frequency. <laughs> yeah. So it's not helpful. <laughs> Can I talk about something really interesting that happened? Yeah. About the brain, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, while we are translating, we are of course using the brain, uh, right? Yes. And then, <laughs> you know, I remember about this exercise where um, it was about the um, having the sun come towards you and then with the sun energy in front of you, we take out each of our organs and then mm -hmm. put it inside the light, mm -hmm. the sunlight, and then clean it and then put it back inside ourselves mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. But I felt, oh my God, I, I'm not sure if I can do this, but because I was translating and I was so sure that I was using my brain. And then what would mm. happen when I take out my brain and put it into the sun? <laughs> no. And what happened? When, uh, yeah, I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to be okay. But what actually happened was that when I took out the brain, I, I lost track of everything. And, but I knew I was still translating, but I don't remember anything. I took the brain out oh, and then put mean. it into the sunlight it's, and then put it back again. And I, I came back to myself. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew I was still translating, but I, I don't remember anything about that. So that's when you I can do. translate without a brain. <laughs> yeah. My brain no, would no, do no, it no. automatically. I, I, yes, <laughs> yes. I, yeah. I'm that's not when I think it's a kind of channeling in a way. It's almost uh, like, my brain has my brain just has enough to supply the words for it <laughs> you know it becomes one of the beautiful things that when it becomes mechanical right you don't need to think about it it just happens you know it's automatic and then you because there is that automation you you still you have all this space right that is empty that the potential is infinite just because you don't block the whole space so in that moment, you know, you, you see it and the images are coming and you do all this kind of stuff. And at the same time, 
Mm-hmm. The automation is there. The, the movement is there. The, the words are there. You don't need to think, right? Mm-hmm. So it becomes even, you know, more uh, flowing. It's, it's, uh, it's very nice. Yeah, it's fun, but it, I understand what you mean. Like there are, there are gradations of attachment or like the meanness translating, right? Yeah. And then what you're describing is just like... <laughs> 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 yeah. But I, I think sometimes having a whole fan filter also helps people. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. they can feel the human aspect of it. Oh, Otherwise yeah, it's just like very... <laughs> <laughs> and it's I important. Also, it's I also, very important. Yeah, and I also feel sometimes when my frequency is too high, it knocks a lot of people out. Right? People go into delta mode, <laughs> or like uh, they, they, not delta. They just like they lose consciousness of what is happening, but it's actually processing because they wake up. They're imagery trance. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, particularly like after lunch or something, I find myself I don't want to go as deep in my translation or my reading so that people can feel a little more, experience a little more consciously. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it's very fun. (laughs) I want to thank you for being here, for spending uh, these uh, wonderful moments uh, Mm -hmm. with us and with all the people Mm -hmm. that's going to watch us. Uh, Mm -hmm. For all of you that are watching this, the school of the heart, the purpose of the school of the heart guide is to be there for everybody. It's to, to help everybody uh, to realize themselves and in the process to have a happier life, to, have, to find you know everything that we feel that we might be missing. And I think at this moment with teachers in 32 countries, I'm sure that you, know, you can find a teacher in the country where you are, speak your own language, you know, explain the different things you might be going through. And I know because of the situation, some of our teachers might not have events up, but if you contact right, somebody, if you contact the teacher, I'm sure they're gonna give you information about what's coming up and what's their plans or you know, find um, a connection. Even if it's just that, right? connect, assist, you know, be helped and f- know that there's always somebody there for you. Mm-hmm. So I wanna really thank everybody for being with us. I wanna thank Hofan and Takako mm-hmm. and our communities everywhere you are, all the teachers, all the students, everybody, right? Everybody who's dedicated into connecting with their heart and, and helping people connecting with their heart. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That's all right. Thank you.